Welcome back to the podcast. So nice to be sitting with you again this week to discuss all things empowerment for the mind, body and soul. But before I dive into this week's topic, I want to remind you of a few really exciting events we have coming up on the Light Path. All of these events happen to be online, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can join us for these. So the first is coming up on the 29th of April, and that is a free workshop. So a one hour free workshop with Natalie, our money mentor, and she's going to really talk you through ways in which you can redefine your relationship with money. And I know money is a forefront and center for a lot of us at the moment with everything going on kind of external to us, but we want to get our power back in that and really be able to redefine the relationship with the, we have with the energy of money so that we can be effective regardless of the economic climate that we happen to find ourselves in at the time. Because as we know, there's always going to be peaks and troughs in economies. And so we want to be able to be as sovereign and empowered as possible, no matter what's going on. And if you sign up for that workshop, Natalie has offered a really generous um, gift to whoever signs up. So you have to sign up to get it, but it's a free workshop. So jump on in and a replay will be available if you can't make that 8 p.m. Australian Eastern time, so Sydney time, Melbourne time, Brisbane time, we're all on the same time zone now. So if you can't make it, don't worry, sign up for it because a replay will be available to you to watch. And that way you can also make sure that you get Natalie's very special and generous gift as well. Now, the Monday following that, I'm personally really excited to be launching Soul Circle. So this is a monthly sit that we will have together. Ultimately, it's a meditation circle online, and I'm actually conducting this circle in the way in which I first joined a circle many years ago, like 15 years ago, and it was really the foundation practice for me, or I guess the soul school for me, spirituality school, as I sat in these circles, and I'm going to conduct it in the exact same format. So when we all log on at 8 p.m. Sydney time, we can, I'm going to sit and I'm going to channel a message for whoever is there. So I'm going to be tapping into everyone's energy and channeling what it is that our, all our guides, our angels, our spiritual squad, whoever it is surrounding us wants us to know. And then I'm going to guide you in a meditation and we're going to end that meditation by doing a group healing. Now that group healing may be us coming together to send loving essence and energy to the earth as a whole or it might be that we are healing each other in that circle so if you're looking for a place where you can really expand in your spiritual practice uh, something that to commit to where you can come together with a group of people once a month and connect with not just like minds but like souls then that circle is going to be really amazing for you. So I will sell tickets to that circle month by month, but up until the 6th of May, you actually have an opportunity to purchase eight circles. So circles from May to December this year at a discounted rate. So I highly suggest you jump onto that because it's not so much about dipping in and having a nice experience. It's actually about consistency. And actually, the more people that commit to that circle, the more intense and potent the energy is going to be because we are all in the same boat and we're all building that energy month by month. So it's going to be on the first Monday of every month, 8 p.m. online. And again, if you can't make that timing, I will, or you can't make that timing, say, every month, like something comes up. I am going to make a recording of that circle available just for 24 hours post that circle. So you can download it and have that there. Even if you were at the circle and you really tapped into that meditation, you loved it, you can download it and re-listen to that again. So all the options are there available for you to join this soul circle. Again, I'm going to stress, this was, this was my core training ground in my spirituality. If you feel like you can't meditate, it's not something that you can really do. I trust you just to like, trust yourself to open yourself to it and just to experience it. I mean, the guided meditation, I might be guiding it and you might, 
in your imagination go off somewhere else. You might choose to stand up and move through it. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter because it's online. We're not in a physical space. If we're in a physical space, we always have to sit there whilst everyone else is meditating. So that's the advantage of having it online. Plus, we can invite so many people all over. So head to the events page for that. Um, I can't wait to get back to my roots with you and be the channel in that environment for you as well. And then on the 13th of May, Cass, our cacao ceremonialist, is holding a Mother's Day cacao ceremony. Again, online to make sure that we can get as many people as possible. But if you're looking for a really cool and really fairly cheap Mother's Day present, you know, something a little bit different for yourself, for your own mum, or for a mama that you love, a cacao ceremony is a beautiful way that that mama or you can spend an hour just really nourishing yourself by being led in this sacred ceremony. And I'm not a mama, but I will be sitting in that circle for sure because a cacao ceremony, oh, they're just always such a gift. I, I almost want to say like, if you know, you know. And so if you don't, you got to do it to know. So that event's going to be so gorgeous. You will have to make your own cup of cacao at home before we log on at 8 p.m. that night. But I've got you covered there too. So in two ways. One, you can buy a satchel of cacao that is already chopped up for you. Um, from the ritualemporium.com and that cacao pouch will hold back around maybe four or five cups. Like I just use a hefty teaspoon or a tablespoon per cacao that I drink. Uh, if you kind of want to be more committed to drinking cacao and having the beautiful benefits that drinking ceremonial grade cacao brings, we have partnered with the Nourish Hub and the beautiful Shannon who owns and runs the Nourish Hub is actually offering the Light Path Collective friends and family, because uh, that's what we are, a 30% off a canister, a 250 gram canister of cacao so you just head to nourishhub.com.au and in checkout when you buy the canister you just pop in tlpc the light path collective tlpc to get 30 percent off there so that is such an awesome unique mother's day gift if that's something that you're looking for i will personally be sitting in that circle that night and i can't wait i just bloody love a cacao ceremony and final announcement um, is that back by popular demand Claire is offering her tarot course again for another enrollment this year she just saw I think there were 10 on the last one and she she won't go over that so you have to get in quick if you want your spot um, beautiful women online again every week for six weeks learning all the meaning of the tarot deck and it is so awesome to see these women and what they're doing afterwards like one of the participants even held like this martini and tarot night where she just had fun with her girlfriends because now she knows what all of the cards mean and she's had practice putting out the different types of spread and interpreting that it's a really practical course I actually did the last one with Claire so I logged on each week and Claire goes through and she talks about the meaning of each card, but then there's a practical element to it because each week the participants had to do a mini tarot reading either on themselves or someone that they knew and then feed that back to the group. And it was so cool to hear the interpretations and then Claire gave her two cents worth in and because I couldn't help myself, of course I did too sometimes, but it was just such an awesome experience. So again, if it's, you know, fine tuning your intuition or you know, you're really getting into your own channeling. You do not have to have any experience in any of it. That's the whole point of it is for beginners. It's a basic tarot course. And if it's something that's always intrigued you, then I highly suggest jumping onto that. There is currently an early bird price special for that six week course, um, but that is only going to last, I think another seven days. So if you want to secure your spot first and foremost, because the numbers are kept small, because of the practical nature of the course and feeding back, Claire wants to be able to get to everybody in terms of contribution. And secondly, um, if you want to jump on that early bird price, do not delay. So all of these can be found at the events page of thelightpathcollective.com 
slash events. All right, now I just want to get onto this podcast episode because uh, a while ago I put it out there on um, social media and I said, um, you know, is there, you know, a podcast topic that you guys would like me to cover? And a few of you actually came back with the same type of theme. And that was you're wanting to further dive into the connection between the physical body and the soul. So today I want to talk about this really profound connection between our bodies and our souls. And we're going to delve into the concept that our bodies are the temples for our souls. And it is often said that when we take care of our physical health, that we're also nurturing our eternal selves or our souls. So let's start by really understanding what this connection does truly mean. So ultimately, our bodies are not just vessels for our souls, but they are actually intricately intertwined with our spiritual essence. Think of it as this symbiotic relationship where each part influences and reflects the other part. We are, you would have heard me say it many times before, that we are vibrational beings pulsating with energy. And this energy exists not just in our bodies and our muscles and our cells and our skin, It's a field that also surrounds us. The unseen part of our physicality is just important as our seen part. So when we look after the seen part, we inadvertently are looking after the unseen part. And I like to think of our physical bodies as a really dense, super compact vibration of energy really stuck together and then our outside is just there's more space between the vibrations if you've ever been in an in-person event with me i'll often show people especially if you studied reiki with me dowsing sticks and so dowsing sticks are a divination tool that i use quite a lot when i'm trying to discern some of the downloads that i'm getting or to read energy in a space or in someone's field And divination is something that people have used for centuries. I mean, you can still now call a dude up and get him, say, to come to your farm to use dowsing rods to see where water is because water is just a a type of energy. So you can actually use dowsing rods to measure or to see how far out your energetic body actually lies. It's so fascinating. And the cool thing about it is with your mind, so part of your physicality, which is actually like, a, it's part of your physicality because it, we think it exists in the brain, but it's actually like an invisible, visible part of our energy um, in that we can then control the, you know, the scope or the size of our energy field. Um, So that's a really cool experiment, which is very hard for me to do on a podcast because you can't see me unless you are watching me on YouTube right now. Hiya, you can see me as I'm talking through this. Um, But ultimately, our physical bodies really is also must be the place where we are in a state that raises our vibration and it keeps it elevated. Well, it's kept elevated by states of energy such as joy, abundance, happiness, and flow. So the non-physical energy and the physical energy are always working together and always supporting and reflecting each other. Like you can't have really high vibration energy and then have a really sluggish body. And I'm not talking about just say like if you have had an accident and physically you are unwell um, or you're in disease mode, That that is different. And there have been many people that have shown the power of the non-physical, so the energetic body on healing the physical body. But you can't be in this amazing state of flow if you're not really also respecting and looking after your physical body. Like it just doesn't make sense. So to break down the interconnectedness of this, I want to do that by showing you all the different ways they're connected and then provide you with some really practical applications where we can really begin to take action like right now 
to nurture this symbiotic relationship with our body and soul. And I think awareness is everything. Like once you know, you know. Once you can see, you can see. And maybe this may just shift your perception of what it is you're doing or the intention behind it. And I know for me in the last year or two, I have had some very big shifts in the way I have intended a lot of the ways I've looked after my physical body. Um, And look, the effects of that are slow. I'm not going to lie. I have also an autoimmune disease, which I'm really trying to manage in a different way. And it is testing my sanity and patience. But I also know that the way I have in the past cared for my body is it absolutely does not work for me. And I will say that in shifting my approach or my intention by the way I'm caring for my physical body, it has actually made my spiritual or my energetic body or existence or experience so much easier. And I feel like I'm in this very potent place of alignment with it. So I know it's just a matter of time before my body catches up. But of course, the egoic human in me wants it to be much quicker. (laughs) All right. So let's go through the interconnectedness between the both so we really understand it. So the physical body and the soul are so intimately connected in so many ways. And so understanding this interrelation really, I think, can lead to that deeper comprehension of our human existence in that we are humans or we are souls having this very human experience. So the first one is what I kind of kicked off this conversation with in that the body is really the temple or the embodiment of the soul so the physical body is actually here to serve as like the vessel or the container or the temple however you like to think of it of the soul so many there are many spiritual and philosophical traditions that you know consider the soul as the internal essence of a person why the body is like the temporary vehicle through which we are living out or expressing the soul's experience of their time here or life here on earth. So this embodiment of our soul in a physical form, it just allows the soul to interact with the material world in order to learn, maybe to heal, evolve, have fun, all of the above. So that embodiment of the soul piece is really beautiful when you think about the fact that your soul has chosen this vessel to come in to be its expression. So I know a lot of us often think about, gosh, like I wouldn't have chosen this body or would I have chosen this ethnicity or would I have chosen to be born in this part of the world or why did I choose all of the above or this family? And I think that sometimes we have to sit back and go, well, clearly because this is the ultimate vessel through which the soul could not only express itself but do whatever it did to come down on this earth to do in terms of healing evolving and learning the other aspect of the interconnectedness is that we have this mutual influence happening so the state of the physical body can significantly impact the soul and vice versa. I think we often think of the soul or our higher self as this never changing, like best expression of our personality. But I would actually question that interpretation. I see the soul and I think the more I do this work and the longer I'm in it, I do see the soul as this ever evolving kind of bird's eye view of humanness. So Um, My soul is maybe at its core never changing, but I'm constantly getting to know it. So in this mutual influence, when the body is like, for example, really healthy and it's balanced and it's full of energy, it creates a really conducive environment for the soul to come out and express its full potential. I know that when I'm feeling on top of the world and energized, it's so much easier, for example, to um, listen to my intuition, to hold myself in meditation. But when I my nervous system is frazzled or I am 
really upset about something or I'm in reaction mode, I could be, say, physically really worn down um, or just sick. I find it really hard to tap into my intuition and my spiritual well-being is not forefront and center, like survival becomes um, that. And I think that sometimes we think about, you know, privilege in that the fact that you're listening to this and if you're able-bodied and you're well and you've got a roof over your head and, and you can afford to eat food today, you are very privileged in order to be able to access your sense and version of spirituality. And I think that that's not a privilege we should take lightly, that we should be really grateful for that. Because if you're in survival mode, you know, you're probably more leaning on faith than you are on your spirituality. Now, is that completely uh, resolute? No, of course. Like many people in, in many states can get um, hugely insightful and inspirational um, connections with their soul, of course. But generally speaking, just keep that in mind. So when I'm really run down or, or sick, for example, I'm not pushing myself to meditate or I'm not making big decisions because I know I just don't have that mutual influence happening in, in my existence. Um, there's also the other aspect of this interconnectedness or, or another aspect of this, because there's quite a few, is the mind-body connection. I mean, I this is not just <laughs> a little aspect I can mention here without saying that this is huge. Like people spend their entire lives working on this. Um, the, my favorite go-to expert on this is Dr. Joe Dispenza. But ultimately the mind-body connection plays a crucial role in linking the physical body with the soul. So our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs can influence our physical health and our vitality. And likewise, physical experiences and sensations can really impact on our mental state and emotional states and even our energetic vibration. So for example, um, a lot of people will say that the more they delve into their spiritual work, I, in fact, I had this conversation with a friend yesterday. She was saying she feels like she's had a huge like expansion and upgrade and alignment in her um, spirituality or her soul work. And as a result, she just can't visit a lot of the same physical places where she used to hang out because it's either too loud, too noisy. Um, the, the lighting affects her too much. And I'm like, mm hmm. Like, you, I mean, you will never catch me. Oh my gosh. I hope I have, I'm not going to jinx myself by saying this. But like, I couldn't think of anything worse than working under fluorescent lights. Like, my energy is just way too sensitive for that. You won't ever probably see me at like a heavy metal rock concert. For me, just I'm just way too sensitive for that. I can't watch like, true crime or murder shows or horror movies like I'm way too sensitive for that um, and it's just that influence that my soul has over my physicality that I actually can't ingest things because of my I guess spiritual or soul um, the personality I guess so practices you know, in order to really strengthen that mind-body connection. Again, visit Dr. Joe Dispenza's work because he's amazing on this. Are things like meditation, yoga, mindfulness, because ultimately the goal of those is to really harmonize the connection between the mind and the body to foster that symbiotic relationship and holistic well-being. Another aspect of interconnectedness is spiritual growth through physical experience and I love growing spiritually this way as well so the experiences and the challenges that we encounter in our physical bodies can absolutely serve as opportunities for spiritual growth and learning and this goes back to what I was saying before about we are privileged to be in a state a relative state of health and security in order to explore our spirituality but in this aspect facing adver adversity um, in your physicality can really cultivate spiritual growth because facing adversity like cultivating resilience 
practicing patience, <laughs> I'm trying right now, practicing patience and compassion and nurturing relationships. So all aspects of human life that contribute to the evolution of the soul. And I'm not even there even touching on like emotional things like grief and, and loss and all of that kind of stuff. So when we go through these human, very physical experiences, we are actually cultivating um, a lot of spiritual growth. And I think that this is where the phrase everything happens for a reason comes from because people look for that meaning in adversity. They want the adversity to be something that they just overcome. They want the adversity to make meaning in their life and to have a positive impact. The other, another aspect of interconnectedness is healing and integration. So healing processes, whether they are physical or emotional or spiritual, they often involve addressing the interconnectedness of, can I say that word properly? The interconnectedness of the body and the soul. So whole, this is why we are big advocates here on the Light Path Collective for holistic approaches to healing because we, through our own experiences, have recognized the importance of integrating the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual aspects to really promote overall well-being and wholeness. And I don't mind here sharing that, you know, my um, autoimmune disease could be pointed to her hereditary factors, you know, inflammation running through the family. Um, but I also de definitely think that my... Um, inflammation disease so my autoimmune disease is directly correlated to emotional pain and trauma that I have experienced in my life and whenever I am going through something that is um, emotionally difficult or stressful boom I will get a flare-up in my autoimmune disease so when I approach any type of healing I'm going to look at it from every single side. So when I got diagnosed, yes, did I take the Western medicine? Yes, I still do that. But I also did a huge deep dive in kinesiology. It's when I really started to learn to meditate. Now I, for example, know this interconnectedness between my body and soul so intimately I can really acknowledge that the way I used to care for my body is absolutely not working for me anymore, but is also harming me. And so I know the approach to my physical health has to be different as well. Another aspect of our long list of the interconnectedness of, oh, our last aspect, I should say, of interconnectedness between our body and soul is the fact that our body is a means for purpose and expression. That the soul, I'll say it again, it expresses itself in the material world through the body. So our actions, our creativity, what we put out there in the world, the relationships that we have and contributions that we make to this world, whether it's through the work that we do, acts of kindness that we do, the families, and communities and friendships groups that we create. These are all manifestations of the soul's essence expressed through the physical form. So recognizing and aligning with our soul's purpose. So our soul's purpose being not just one thing, many things that we are here to do, to express, to experience can lead to a, such a more fulfilling and meaningful life journey because we're also really getting to enjoy the expression of that through our physical form. So ultimately to sum all that up, the physical body and the soul are not separate entities but are so intricately woven together in the fabric of our human existence and understanding your connection between your personal body and soul and nurturing that connection is absolutely going to lead to a deeper sense of self-awareness, of purpose 
and holistic well-being. So let's look at some practical examples of how to do that. And none of these are groundbreaking. None of these you're going to go, oh, I never thought of that before. But the way in which you think of it, so the shift in perception or intention that I talked about at the beginning may shift as a result of looking at it through this lens. And as we know, a miracle is a shift in perception. So, you know, I feel like recently I've just had a miracle in this aspect because I've shifted my whole perception on how I care for my physicality. So first of all, like to illustrate this, let's look at yoga. So yoga is a very popular, I would say, fitness activity. Like people do it to build strength and flexibility. But you have to remember that actually the original creation and purpose of yoga was mindful movement and breath work. Yes, we are strengthening our physical body, but we're also in that process of those poses we're getting to experience the intention with which they were created and it's to develop a deeper connection to ourselves. I once read that actually yoga was practiced to give people the strength, agility, patience, all the things to sit in meditation. So you did yoga so that you would a would be able to sit in meditation for a long time. I don't know how true that is. I read that once and I've always remembered it. Also, like the discipline required to maintain a yoga practice, or one which I struggle with, really mirrors the dedication needed to nurture our spiritual well-being. So yoga is one of those things where you turn up once and it's really hard, and then you turn up again and it's a little bit easier, and then you turn up again and it's really hard. And so it's like the kid, I love when yoga teachers say, like, just keep coming back to the mat. Just keep coming back to the mat because I know I personally learned so much on a yoga mat. Patience, self-love, self-compassion, listening to my own body. You know, one of my favorite yoga teacher always says, like, you do not have to take every option that is offered. You need to listen to your own body this is your own practice and i don't think i've ever gotten that instruction in say like a hit workout class it's like pick up that weight go for it do it but in yoga like that's the essence of it so it's really helpful in cultivating that body soul connection because you're not only learning a lot of the qualities required but you're actually practicing them another practical application of this or example is nutrition so um, when we choose like whole foods really nourishing foods we're obviously supporting our physical health but we're also providing the soul with a vitality that is needed to thrive if you look at the molecular construction of certain foods you can see that a lot of you know, really beautiful organic produce, for example, the molecular structure represents that of um, like emotions such as joy and love and things like that. Whereas like processed food, the molecular structure is so messy. So you think about what that energy is doing to your body. And then because your body and soul are so interconnected, what that's doing to your spirituality or your energetic vibrational body. So the concept of like you are what you eat <laughs> totally extends beyond the physical realm because it encompasses your spiritual vitality as well. So a practice that I like to do is like reiki my food before I eat it. I can't always afford the best high quality produce that is organic and and so I can, I can at least send that energy of healing into my food before I ingest it into my body because I know the effects that it really does have. Um, the mind is just as physical as it is spiritual. I feel like the mind is like that bridge maybe even between the two. So a really powerful approach to really sharpen that is through mindfulness practices like and and I get a lot of this through nervous system regulation practices so 
bringing awareness to your body and its sensations. If you've ever done any moon membership work with me, you'll know or get you know get into the routine of every guided meditation I do. If you um, have purchased the guided meditations from the Ritual Emporium, the morning meditations that were just released. If you've already done one, congratulations, because they only just dropped on Saturday. So thanks, I hope you're enjoying them. But you know, every meditation I do and that I guide, I start off by giving us time to bring awareness to our physical body, the sensations and how it feels and and give it time just, just to simmer down so we can get into that transcendental meditation state. But being mindful, even just throughout the day, like of how your body is feeling as it moves and, it, and how it feels in terms of its nourishment, we're really creating a safe space for our body to hold our soul or to actually think in a way that's really clear and expansive as opposed to reactionary and survival mode. Regular body movement, so exercise is a huge essential part of this as well. So whether like you're walking in nature, you're doing Tai Chi, you're dancing, you're running on a treadmill, or whatever it is, you're swimming, our bodies like really need to move, not just to keep us physically fit, but to also energize our soul. So movement can be like meditation, you know, in a movement meditation that can really allow us to deeply connect both the physicality and our higher selves. Um, I'll touch on nervous system work again, a very potent carrier of life force energy through our body is our nervous system. And it's a determiner of how energy flows through our body. So any physical activity that promotes the um, regulation of our nervous system is super duper important as well. Um, even for me, like I'm, I'm really into lymphatic drainage. So me like making sure I'm washing every morning, dry brushing, that care for that physical body, moving that physical energy around gives me so much vitality throughout the day to then go on and complete my soul's work, whatever that may be that day. It could be enough energy to help a friend out. It could be the, the clarity to be able to sit here and channel this podcast episode for you. So it's all so interconnected. It's, and it's never just one thing. And I, I'm, I'm going to go back to one of my favorite yoga teachers, Beck again. She always says like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if I'm like rushed in my morning routine, and of course sometimes that happens or I think, oh God, I just really can't be bothered to do that today. It has a massive knock-on effect throughout my day. I know that when I was in my teaching days, I used to get up at five in the morning because it was the only time I could have for myself. And I used to work out and I used to love it because the first thing I did every morning was I used to get up and give to myself because I knew for the rest of the day, I'd be giving to everybody else. And that is definitely a philosophy that is carried on. My morning routine may look different now. I get up, I nourish myself with bushflower essence drops, um, mine ones, of course, and from the Ritual Emporium. Um, I make myself a, an elixir I need to drink. I sit, I meditate, then I go for my movement, whatever that may be. Then it's preparing myself for the day and then it's starting work. So really exploring the lessons that you can learn from your bodies can actually teach you a lot about your higher self and vice versa. Like patience, as I mentioned before, I'm struggling with discipline, self-love. Like these are just a few virtues that really emerge from this symbiotic relationship. Because when we prioritize our well-being, we cultivate a really strong foundation for spiritual growth. This is exactly why I offer the moon membership, because it takes discipline to pull up that information, to sit with it, to journal, to do a ritual every new and full moon. But that's only twice a month. Like it is really an hour probably. So two hours total of your month. That's it. That's it. And then people find that hard to do and it takes discipline. Like it's why I physically don't hold circles because to come and have someone else lead it and do it for you. Yes, you're making the effort to come, but to actually have to pull up the resources and make them make sense for you 
shows so much more discipline and empowerment and sovereignty and moving forward you would have heard me a lot talk about in the age of Aquarius that's what it's going to be all about that sovereignty and so looking after your physical body really helps you cultivate that it is the foundation of why I set up the ritual emporium people often say like the most successful businesses will find a solution to a problem and sell you the solution and I believe the opposite the philosophy around my businesses whether it's the ritual emporium or the light path collective is I'm actually going to provide you the tools where you can find the answer yourself where you can solve the problem yourself because I believe in your ability to do so and I want to empower you to do so and that is the purpose behind everything that I choose to offer you whether it be tools on the witch Real emporium or tools here so our bodies are absolutely the temples for our souls so by honoring them and nurturing them you know in our physical health or our mental health we're actually honoring that external part of ourselves so in order to continue to explore this beautiful connection and to discover the profound wisdom that is held in this connection i encourage you to try out some of the things that i have suggested in this with that lens so it might not be that you're doing anything new but the intention behind it might have shifted if you have any other tips share them um, on our socials or on our facebook community group i think that would be really beautiful and i just want to thank you for sharing with me that you wanted to dive more into this to understand that more thoroughly um i think that's really beautiful and i hope that in this episode i've been able to answer those questions but for now as always i just really thank you for being here and i'm sending you so much love and light as you are walking your own amazing path